السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سعید علی مردان ادمی ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل ان دس لیکچر وی ول لرن سم بیسک ٹرمینالوجیز اباؤٹ سنڈیکل کوارڈینیٹس اینڈ دین وی ول لرن ہاؤ وی کین ایویلویٹ ٹرپل انٹائگرلز ان سنڈیکل کوارڈینیٹس دس سنڈیکل دس سنڈیکل کوارڈینیٹس ریپرزنٹس اے پوائنٹ پی ان سپیس بائی آرڈر ٹرپلز آر تھیٹا جی ان وچ آر اینڈ تھیٹا آر پولر کوارڈینیٹس فار دا ورٹیکل پروجیکشن اف پی آن دا ایکس وائی پلین اینڈ جی از دا ریکٹینگولر ورٹیکل کوارڈینیٹ وٹ از مین of this all these things in two dimension space if you see here in this diagram if you take only x axis and y axis and we take this point here then the coordinates of this point in polar coordinates are r and theta and if we shift this point vertically upward in the in the third direction which is g then the coordinates of this point will be r theta and z so these are the cylindrical coordinates the base of cylindrical coordinates is always a polar coordinate in two dimension what it means if we take z equal to 0 we will come back in the two dimension space on this point after this we are going to discuss the relationship between rectangular coordinates and cylindrical coordinates in three dimension x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta and z equal to z are the transformation equation from cartesian coordinate system to cylindrical coordinate system and the reverse is r square is equal to x square plus y square and tan theta is equal to y over x and one more important thing in triple integrals in cylindrical coordinates we will always take this order dz r dr d theta what it means if we have to evaluate the cylindrical coordinate integral in three dimension space then this triple integral can be solved by using the basic terminology is that dz is our inner variable dr is our central variable and d theta is our outer variable please note that in cylindrical coordinates this order is fixed we will always perform integration first with respect to z then we will perform integration with respect to r and in the end we will perform integration with respect to theta here the limits of z are r22 minus r square square root limits of r are 0 to 1 and limits of theta are 0 to 2 pi now the integration of dz with respect to z is simply z for the limits r22 minus r square square root applying fundamental theorem of calculus upper limit minus lower limit we have 2 minus r square square root minus r upper limit minus lower limit up till here we have completed the process of integration and simplification with respect to z in the next step we will start the process of integration with respect to r for that purpose we will multiply the term inside the bracket with the r which is available outside so we get 2 minus r square raised to r 1 by 2 into r minus r square then in the next step we will integrate it in order to integrate the first term inside the bracket we will use this formula what is this formula if in the process of integration we have a function with some power and the derivative of function is available as a multiplier in the integrand then the integration of function with power is f of x raised to power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c what it means we will add 1 in the power of the function and divide with the same number so in the first term you can see the derivative of 2 minus r square is minus 2r so there is a deficiency of minus 2 here with r if we can develop minus 2 here then we can ha have a derivative of 2 minus r square here and we can apply this formula so in the next step i can multiply with minus 2 and divide with the same to produce its derivative so that i can apply this formula on the first term in the next step we will apply the integral limit from 0 to 1 on each term then we have minus 1 by 2 limit from 0 to 1 to minus r square raised to power 1 by 2 minus 2r dr minus limit from 0 to 1 r square dr now in the first integral we can apply this formula and the integration of second integral can be done with the help of our formula r cube over 3 so here is the integration 
2 minus r square raised to the power 1 by 2 plus 1 over 1 by 2 plus 1. Minus integration of r square is r cube over 3 for the limit 0 to 1. In the next step, we will perform the simplification. 1 by 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2. This 2 and this minus 2 can be cancelled out. So we have minus 1 by 3 outside like this. So minus 1 by 3, 2 minus r square raised to the power 3 by 2 for the limit 0 to 1 minus r cube over 3 for the limit 0 to 1. Now in both terms, minus 1 by 3 is common. We can take it outside. And we can also apply the limit, upper limit minus lower limit with the help of fundamental theorem of calculus on each term. For upper limit, in the first term, we have replaced r with 1 minus we have replaced r with 0. Similarly, in the second term, we have taken the 3 outside. So we have replaced r with 1 minus r with 0. Now making the simplification. From the first term, 2 minus 1, we have 1 raised to power 3 by 2, which is 1. From the second term, we have 2 raised to power 3 by 2, which is 2 into square root of 2. And from the second bracket, we have 1 cube minus 0, which is equal to 1, which is here. Now this whole term is constant with respect to theta. We can take it outside. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 3. And we have limit from 0 to 2 pi d theta. Up till here, we have completed the process of integration with respect to r. In the next step, we will apply the process of integration with respect to theta. Now, the integration of d theta with respect to theta is simply theta for the limit 0 to 2 pi. So, when we apply fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit, we get 2 pi minus 0, which is equal to 2 pi. And the next step, we can multiply this 2 with this 2, which become 4. So we have 4 pi. We can also multiply the brackets with minus sign. So we have square root of 2 minus 1 over 3 as our answer. So our complete answer is 4 pi into square root of 2 minus 1, whole divided by 3. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.